Ah, Mike Carmen is going to have a highlight of his media career. He's doing the Acre Pro buy sell today. I don't know. Mark, Mark, Mark Mike, Mike has got a chance to, uh, uh, I don't know if he's into the world of land sales, but Acre Pro Midwest Farm Group is. They're your, 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 your farm, local farmland specialist with decades of experience in Indian agriculture. No one knows the market better. Whether you're doing a 1031 exchange or simply buying and selling farmland, your local Acre Pro agent will walk the land with you and ensure the deal is done right. And visit AcrePro.com or call 765-587-3185. Kyle Spray and the company gang will take good care of you. Mike, uh, there's this is the time of year. Uh, you've covered men's basketball. You've covered women's basketball. Uh, nothing like March. The calendar will turn to March tomorrow. Uh, we'll start with, the, obviously, the men. A di- you know, a disappointing loss, certainly, for Purdue fans uh, and, and for Purdue losing to Indiana and beating, being beaten relatively soundly uh, in the second half by the Hoosiers. Uh, I'm going to start with our first buy sell question. All right, are you buying that Purdue can win one of its last? Can will they win one of their last two games? We know they can win one of the last two. Will they win one of their last two when they go to Wisconsin on Thursday night? And of course, the senior day uh, game against uh, Illinois on Sunday at 12:30. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I'd buy that. Uh, I'd buy that. Uh, I think. Uh, you know, they're they're better than Wisconsin. You know, Wisconsin's got some. You know, we don't know the status of Chucky Hepburn right now. He got hurt against Michigan. Um, so even with Chucky Hepburn, I think Purdue would be a strong buy uh, to take that. Um, and I, you know, I, I think there's a, you know, a renewed determination from this team now to finish strong. Now that they have a piece of the Big Ten, not that that was hovering around them, but yeah, now now that they have a piece of it and. I, I think they're going to move forward. And even if they would stumble Thursday, I think that being at home on, on Sunday would uh, would put them in that position because you you just don't know what Illinois is going to bring to the table. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they're just Illinois is so inconsistent. Uh, it would depend on what Illinois did in its previous game to have a true prediction of what Illinois might do on Sunday. But, yeah, I, I'd buy that. I think uh, they'll, they'll be – I think they'll be outright champs. They'll get the number one seed in the Big Ten tournament and then – uh, move on from there. How in the world, Illinois? It just is. It, it, you watch Illinois on certain nights, and they the second half against Northwestern, they pass the eyeball test. They would make you fearful if you're Purdue or anybody. But if they play that way, then they go to Ohio State and can't get out of their own way in a lot of ways. Uh, they had a chance to win at Indiana, didn't do it. Uh, really an interesting team. Uh, I, you know, I think that that, uh, that team is uh, will make for an interesting college basketball game come Sunday at 1230 uh, when those two teams meet. And, and winning at the Kohl Center is never easy. As, as Purdue, Purdue is known, though, Purdue's had a fair amount of success up, up there in Matt Painter's tenure, but uh, going to be an interesting uh, part. All right, I want to ask on the NCAA tournament, I know that Selection Sunday is still – what uh 12 days away um are you buying more than i maybe a bit afraid six or more teams in the big 10 what teams do you say are going to make the ncaa tournament on the men's side uh you know you, you got purdue you got indiana you got uh maryland um northwestern's probably in um I don't have the standings in front of me, but anybody that's tied for second is in, which yeah. could be which could Illinois. be everybody. Could be everybody. I think Illinois is in. I think um, you know I was an interesting case there. State, I, I, they they they're probably in. Michigan State's probably in. Uh, you know, when you start going down a little bit further, you know, Penn State that lost Sunday was killer for them. Um, you know, Rutgers. In yeah. probably in that probably pushed them in and kept Penn State from out from being from from getting in at, at this point, but they still have some games to play. So uh, I, I think it, you know more than six is I, more than six going to get in the tournament. Um, it's just a matter of how this all shakes out here in the ne- the, the the next uh, week or so, and then you have the Big Ten tournament where teams are going to feel like they can jockey for. For position in that in that situation but you know anybody in the upper half and you know got another week here to to really you know see how these standings play out and 
you know, the, to me, the interesting thing about this last week is more about who, who can get that double bye because one of those teams that are currently tied for second is going to be left out. Yeah. They're going to be, they're going to be the five or potentially the six. And that means they got to play an extra, an extra game. Not that they need an extra game for the NCAA tournament, but if you have any hopes of winning the Big Ten tournament, uh, you put a little bit more stress on yourself. But as as we've seen in this Big Ten tournament over the years, whether you play four games in four days or three games in three days, you have you have a pretty good chance. Uh, we've seen teams play, win four games in four days. We've see, we've seen teams win three games in three days. So it's not not impossible. For, for somebody that plays on Thursday to, to win this thing. Wisconsin, uh, Michigan, two teams that are kind of sitting in a precarious situation. And Wisconsin's going to have a lot of mo- motivation Thursday night against Purdue. Uh, and like you said, the injury situation, Chucky Hepburn certainly is going to make an interesting uh, uh, dynamic to that game. Michigan, to me, is a team with talent and could be really dangerous, or they could take a quick exit and not do anything. I mean, they're they're a team that's really interesting that could make a, in my view, could make a run in the in the Big Ten tournament, and maybe even make a run in the NCAA tournament if they can just get in there. And that's a potential first round opponent for Purdue if Purdue's right. the one. Uh, not the most enticing matchup that you no. you didn't want to see in an eight nine game. And that, uh, and the other interesting thing coming up is if Purdue ends up as the number one. Uh, who is in that eight nine game? Because I, I, right now I think you have a you have a chance to get Michigan, Rutgers, Illinois, uh, Iowa. Uh, I mean that's that's pretty heavy stuff for an eight nine game to play the one. So if Purdue ends up being the one, they they're they're going to have a daunting challenge in that in that opening game of the Big Ten tournament uh, to get through to the semifinals. And you're gonna you're probably going to have face a team that. Probably had lost the game or two down the stretch, but they're going to have desperation because they they feel like they need to cement themselves in the NCAA tournament. You know, Michigan status is a lot. You know, Jed How- is Jed Howard going to play? What what's yeah. he going to do? Uh, you know, I think Michigan's been pretty effective when they've had their two big guys on the floor here recently. Yes, uh, that that have caused teams problems. So, um, yeah, it's it's. I think all those matchups in the Big Ten tournament, regardless of how it falls. It, uh, you're going to see some 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 really close games uh, through, throughout the throughout the whole thing. All right, no one no one has covered Purdue women's basketball better than you over the years, and you still are uh, pretty in, t- in tune with what goes on in the Big Ten. Purdue had a tough loss again up at Minnesota. Uh, the Boilermakers, are you buying that they are firmly in the NCAA tournament, or do they ha- need to win? And, of course, the Purdue women will play Wisconsin on Thursday uh, in the 7-10 game. Uh, is this team firmly in the NCAA tournament? Uh, or Let me, let me rephrase it, because firm is a, is a tough word. Is this team going to make the NCAA tournament, in your opinion, even if they lose to Wisconsin on Thursday? Uh, I think they will, but for them not to have angst for 10 days, they need to beat yeah. Wisconsin to to make themselves feel good and look ahead to the NCAA tournament. You know, they've had they've had the year that they needed to have. Yeah. Where they, they improve their Big Ten standing, they are in a position to make the NCAA tournament, and then whatever happens after that is fine. Yeah, this was the goal coming in. Uh, you know, move up the standing, which you know, they had a game canceled. You know, if they had beat Michigan State at home, they had a chance maybe to be six or maybe fifth, depending on how things worked out. And, you know, there's a couple games they want back uh, as far as, you know, they blew a lead against Nebraska in the fourth quarter that would have improved their position. But it, it's been a good year so far, uh, and you don't want it to, to end without being in the NCAA tournament. So take care of business Thursday against Wisconsin in the lovely city of Minneapolis, the Kevin, <laughs> the Kevin Warren Classic, as I like to call it. <laughs> Uh, and then whatever happens on Friday against uh, uh, Iowa, you know, you just you just kind of go from there. Uh, but uh, again, they've had a good year. They just need to finish it off in the right way. I thought if they won two of their last three, they would be in good shape for the tournament. Uh, but you know, losing two of the last three probably, you know, again, puts some stress there. But they're they're also at, at that point you, you take take it all out of your own hands. And you have to see what happens around you. In other conferences and stuff like that, you never want to never want to have to rely on somebody else to win or lose to determine your fate. Just to let our 
listeners and viewers know that we don't script this completely. I'm going to throw another left of buy sell. Zach Eady, who has been a terrific this year and is still has a, is the odds on favorite for national player of the year and probably probably Big Ten player of the year. But I'm going to ask you a, a, a silly question: Does he have? We are you buying that he has another 30, 12, 30 points, twelve rebound game in his? arsenal from now to the end of the season you buying that if you were if you were betting man and you would never do a thing like that um would you would you would you take that bet yes yeah i think he's gonna he'll have at least one of those um i, I i'm not gonna say when but I, maybe the ncaa <laughs> tournament after he gets out of the big ten maybe that'll help may, maybe maybe that'll help i mean if produce a, a one seed or even a two seed you're playing a 15 or 16 then I don't think whoever they play has a lot of seven four guys running around campus that they can uh, prepare for. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say he's got at least one in there. In there, and he that may happen Thursday, it may happen Sunday, uh, it may happen in the Big Ten tournament. Who knows? I, you know, I do think that uh, kind of off topic here, but they, yeah. you know, he, you know, he didn't take a shot during that seventeen two run. Yes, and. Uh, you know, that's something that can't happen. And, you know, when the threes are not falling, I mean, just pound the ball inside and just just lean on that to get you through whatever rough stretch you're going through and uh, maybe stop the bleeding a little bit more than, than what you did. It's not what the reason why you lost but uh, on on Saturday. But, you know, lean on lean on your guy. I mean, that's what he's there for. He is, you know, he in my mind, he's going to be Big Ten Player of the Year, even though some guys have come on strong lately. And I, he's still the, the the heavy, heavy favorite for, for national player of the year. Uh, so you know he's he's put up good numbers for a reason. And uh, yeah, I see another thirty and twelve, thirteen rebound game coming up. All right, next week. Well, I'm gonna well, I'm just gonna prep you for next week. We've got. I'll be asking about will will you be buying or selling a Purdue Indiana Big Ten tournament final? Of course, if if the Hoosiers are this two seed. Still remains to be seen, and then also we'll we'll let you project out where you're, where you're buying in terms of where Purdue can go uh, in uh, the NCAA tournament. They can go all the they can go to the Final Four, right? They just got to win games, right? So that's as, as simple as Pretty, that. Well, if they hit, if they hit some perimeter shots, I think that helps them. But uh, yeah. but you know it, it's you know Matt said this the other night. This is true about basketball. When you, when the ball goes in the hole, you look great. When it doesn't, yeah. you look bad. And that's not always true. I mean, you can you can play well and not shoot well, and you can shoot well and not play well in other areas. Yeah. But the, the goal of the game is to put the ball in the basket. So you have to have more points at the end of the day than anything. That is else. a true thing. It's I didn't I, I didn't know if you I didn't know if you're going to do a buy and sell on me after you know these months. Are you selling me I, or are you buying me? You know, the, the thing is, you are a direct correlation <laughs> since you've. Uh, We've been helping out. Uh, it's not been good since, uh, uh, but I think Brian Newbert would uh, he'd argue with that too. We want we want you here, and you got. <laughs> and I always tell myself I got nothing to do with this. You know what? They're 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 doing this. They're, they're playing without me. I have I've got nothing, and neither do you. You just I, uh, you just report on what you see. All right. Last question I want to have is: is who are you buying? as your first team, all Big Ten team. And I know we still have a little bit of time. And I think, right, you were the one pointed out that team will be that team will be announced before the Big Ten tournament, correct? Or okay, yeah. so tell, tell me who's who are you buying as your first team all Big Ten team? I mean this is easy. I think this has been set for a couple of weeks. You got Zach Eady, you got Trace Jackson Davis, you got Chris Murray, you got Jalen Pickett. And I, I as my fifth, and I know there'll be some discussion about this, my fifth is Boo Booey. Um, you know, you can put Jamar Young from Maryland in that group. You can put Hunter Dickinson from Michigan in that group. But those, I think those five, um, especially in the second half of the Big Ten season, have really separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Uh, and that's a – when you look at the years that those five guys have had and also tie it to what their team has done. And I, that's an important element to me. When you look at that now, Penn State's at the bottom of the league, but Jalen Pickett has had one of those yeah. one of those fantastic years that he needs he needs to be rewarded for that. And I think I think it'll happen. Now, the fifth spot I think will be close. Uh, I think the voting will be close, depending on you know how it all shakes out. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that's a solid five that's been in place for 
for for a couple of weeks here, in my opinion, and I, I'd be surprised if it if it doesn't end up that way. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting thing to watch. It's been an f- interesting year. If Purdue fans or fans in general would just enjoy the ride and say this has really been <laughs> great basketball instead of gnashing teeth, uh, I get it. Uh, that part uh, is 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 all part of it. All right, Mike. Contrary to your record as the as the beat writer here, you've done a, you've done a great job. We appreciate all that you do and your expertise, and we'll look forward. It's look forward to more of this. We're going to do a couple of these episodes here, uh, leading into the Big Ten tournament and into the uh, first round of the end, first weekend of the NCAA tournament, uh, as Mike will be covering that. One last question, Aoff. Now I keep going on here. That still seeing. Are you buying Purdue as a one seed or a two seed right now? Well, as of today, I think it's. Uh, I think they could go either way. Um, again, it's going to depend what happens around them. It's going to depend what they do. I think if they, in my opinion, you know, if they win these last two games and then get to the championship game of the Big Ten tournament, I, I think you can make a strong case for them being a number one. Uh, maybe probably not the number one overall, but still a number one. Uh, but if they slip up at some point, and it also depends, you know, does. Uh, Kansas losing the Big 12 tournament does, you know, I, I think there's a small group of teams that can still get a number one and produce one of them. I, I, I view five teams right now that can get a number one, Alabama, Houston, Kansas, UCLA, and Purdue. Yeah. And if Purdue's not a number one, I think they should be the first number two. That would put them from a regional standpoint in Louisville uh, in that in that position. So, uh, a lot depends what happens around them. I know UCLA has to play Arizona coming up. Um, so, but it, you know, Purdue can finish strong here this this week and then do some damage in the Big Ten tournament. I think they they'll, they'll climb back up. I, I don't know if they're not number one right now. And it's the whole thing about bracketology is they do it every day. Yeah. The committee the committee does it one time next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> although you know, although they had their their reveal, reveal. They, wh- yeah. where they did it, but. You know, they're, they're starting from scratch, I think, when when they get together. So Purdue's got a lot of good wins. Uh, you can't ignore what they did in Thanksgiving, over Thanksgiving in Oregon. You can't ignore what they, they did early in the Big Ten season. You have, you have to take into account that they've lost four of their last six. But again, if you, if you turn things around here a little bit, uh, finish on a high note, I think you're, you're back in, in the conversation uh, for that number one seed, I wouldn't be surprised if the, if the bracketology people have them down to number two uh, this week. Yeah, uh, uh, but you know, again, you, maybe as a two, you have better matchups than a one. It just, it just, there's prestige with a one. I get it, but you know, you just you got to get in, and then you've got to you've got to have some favorable matchups. You've got to have uh, face some teams that you feel like you have a big advantage. Uh, over and that you can, you know, advance through the tournament. Yeah, well said. All right. Yeah, that, that losing four of six could change to winning seven of your last 11 if right. if things roll right. Uh, uh, I'll ask you next week if that's going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, sounds good. All right. I want to thank you, Mike, and want to thank uh, AcrePro.com. Uh, visit AcrePro.com and call 765-587-3185. Talk to your local land agent today. Again, that's 765-587-3185 or acrepro.com. We'll see you next week as we'll be looking forward to the Big Ten Tournament. We'll be asking Mike, will he be buying or selling two nights of hotel reservations or one that will be, he's got all week to prepare for that one. I know that that's going to be top of mind awareness for him uh, as well. So (laughs) as he he rolls his eyes. All right. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for, thanks for watching and listening. And we'll see you next week on our acrepro.com buy a sell.